Good evening and welcome to a special Inside the Issues edition of Tucker Carlson Tonight. I'm Mark Stein in for Tucker, who will be dropping by a little later. Inside the Issues in a land beyond law, we have breaking news. Tony Podesta, the Democrat lobbyist whose brother John Podesta was the Hillary Clinton campaign chair, who got hacked because his password was password, with a zero where the O should be. Anyway, Tony Podesta doesn't need to be hacked by hostile foreign entities because he's already working for them. He's just signed on to be a lobbyist for Huawei, the world's largest manufacturer of telecommunications equipment and the second biggest maker of smartphones, bigger than the far more famous Apple. Hey, remember what they told us 20 years ago? China was going to be making all the crappy knickknacks and these colors don't run t-shirts and your coffee mugs and sneakers and cheapo office furniture. And instead, America would be the knowledge economy. Somehow, China wound up with all the knowledge too. And via Huawei, it's been shipping the knowledge to the likes of Iran, which is why its business activities are restricted to one degree or another by the U.S. and other governments. But notwithstanding U.S. government sanctions, Huawei is still respectable enough to attract hotshot Democrat players close to Joe Biden, such as Tony Podesta. No, sorry, stop, stop, stop. I can't go on with this. It's the weekend, and the soul needs cleansing. It does a fellow good to raise his eyes from the dank sewer of political corruption among a diseased and decadent pseudo-elite of third-rate grifters selling out their country and contemplate instead the pure, unsullied, pristine, translucent beauty of fine art at its finest. Oh, that orchestra is rehearsing in the next room again. Yes, this month, the Manhattan art world has been wrapped by the news that the acclaimed artist Hunter Biden, the Botticelli of Bagmen, the Pizarro of Politburo suck-ups, has painted a self-portrait. It shows Hunter after he accidentally stuck his crack pipe in his ear. Oh, no. Sorry, that's Van Gogh cutting off his ear. No, this new self-portrait shows Hunter Biden after swinging by the Department of Justice and accidentally smoking the ever more imminent Durham report. Oh, my mistake. No, that's Francis Bacon's self-portrait. Ah, oh, here we are. Stand well back. Self-portrait by Hunter Biden. Hmm. And if you're saying... Hey, wait a minute. I stayed at that corner suite at the airport Marriott just last month. You're missing the point. What makes it a self-portrait of Hunter Biden is that if you peer very carefully at the left-hand horizon, you can just make out Jen Psaki in the press room explaining why this sudden boom in Hunter Biden art, it now accounts for, I believe, 3% of GDP. It's all strictly on the up and up. Well, this showing that was uh, that you're referencing was previously public. Uh, he's not going to have any conversations related to the selling of art. Uh, that will be left to the gallerist. We believe this is a reasonable system that has been established that allows for Hunter Biden to work in his profession within appropriate safeguards. So he's not going to discuss anything related to the selling of art. Uh, and I would reiterate that the gallerist will be the only person who handles transactions or conversations in that vein and will reject any offer that is out of the ordinary. Wouldn't it be more transparent to just release the names of the buyers so that everyone would know who purchased this art and how much they paid? Well, we don't. We won't know who the buyers are. Uh, Hunter Biden won't know who the buyers are, but we won't know who they are. So there's no scenario where they could provide influence. Uh-huh. Here's how it works. Uh, in theory, a gallery is what they call in American law a public accommodation. Anyone can walk in. Art lovers, passing tourists, process servers delivering subpoenas from Hunter Biden's baby mamas, uh, footpads and ne'er-do-wells stunned to discover that the Hunter Biden exhibition is the only store in New York where everything is so highly priced it falls above the upper limit of the new please feel free to loot and steal without any consequences law. Uh, anyone can walk in and look at the paintings, even Republicans. But if you try to buy them, you find they've already sold at the private view. 
which is invitation only, and which the artist, if he's living, which Hunter on his more lucid days just about is, uh, is expected to attend and mingle with the invitees, uh, aesthetically sensitive lobbyists, generals of the Chinese People's Army, Ukrainian oligarchs, the wife of the former mayor of Moscow, Somali warlords, and other celebrated art collectors. When you're a living artist making half a million bucks per, quote, artwork, you know who your buyers are. And what do you know? That's just how it is with Hunter. Former Obama ethics honcho, no right-winger, no fan of this show, Walter Schaub, quote, Hunter Biden will meet with prospective buyers of his absurdly overpriced presidency profiting art. Good grief. Who are these prospective buyers of Hunter Biden's fabulous paintings? Well, the Manhattan art world is abuzz with rumors. Mary Ping, the great aunt of Chairman Xi Jinping and a familiar figure at Sotheby's auctions is a famous collector of still lives, uh, vases of flowers, bowls of fruit, attractively arranged mounds of dead Uyghurs. But she's thinking of switching to Biden's. Uh, Slobodan Bogomil Burisma, the third cousin twice removed of the billionaire Ukrainian deputy assistant minister of energy, controls 40 percent of the region's oils, but now says there's more money in watercolors. Massiva Pipeliner, the Kazakh supermodel who works with a similar blowpipe to Hunter. She sucks in all the gas in Central Asia and thanks to a new deal approved by Joe Biden, blows it all the way over to Germany. Uh, and then, of course, Fang Fang, the crack Chinese agent who penetrated Democrat presidential candidate Eric Shagwell, uh, is said to be looking for an attractive pastoral landscape to hang on the ceiling. These guys don't know much about art, but they know what they like. And what they like is a Biden family whose main creative energies go into devising new and ever more artful ways to be bought. This is a way better racket than the Clinton Foundation. Under the Clinton model, a Saudi prince or a Sudanese machete magnet had to pay two million bucks and sit through a speech by Chelsea on diarrhea in Africa. Hunter is to art as Chelsea is to diarrhea speeches, but at least you can sell the frame for 12 bucks and use the picture as a scarecrow. Meanwhile, rival New York gallery owners are urging Joe Biden to cease eating tapioca and watching Matlock in the White House basement because he could easily double Hunter's prices by offering himself up as a surrealist performance art. Do you dig those QAnon theories? Joe's taking the mainstream. We are not defunding the police. We and have are not. there people who, in the Democratic Party, who want to defund the Are there people in the Republican Party who think we're sucking the blood out of kids? I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Corn pop like to suck the blood out of kids. They'd be on the diving board admiring my leg hair. And he'd rear up in his Esther Williams bathing cap. Had to take the tire on to him. Come on, man. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.